I see a lot of you hating on wireless mouse and keyboards on the internet. Why ah? Belum cuba, belum tau. Sudah cuba, tiap-tiap hari mau. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know for your very first time as a wireless virgin. Like, how to connect, what is a good size, and how much to spend. Your mother no teach? No mind. I teach you lah. I'm talking about mouse and keyboard. What do you think? So there are two main things to consider when buying your first wireless peripherals. Number one, how to make that switch. I'm talking about connectivity, battery life. And number two, what to look out for when you're shopping in terms of features, size, which does not matter, and price point, which does matter. So the first thing you need to know when making that wireless switch is of course connectivity. And there are two main ways to connect your wireless peripherals to your devices. I'm talking about Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless. But both these options also don't really leave you wireless uh, because you actually need a cable to charge them. Uh. The Corsair M75 Air Mouse and K65 Plus keyboard both work with Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz wireless via a USB dongle. You should always buy wireless gear that use the same type of cable. In this case, they both use a USB-C cable, so you don't have to carry around multiple cables when you are out and about. Also, who has time for micro USB? It's already 2024 though. And to make it easier for yourself, just leave one cable plugged into your device at all times, so when you need a quick charge, you don't have to run around like a headless chicken. For those of you who use a laptop with limited USB ports, plug in a thumb drive, an external drive, and then you run out already. What to do? Don't worry. Abang Bayung. If you have a phone and you're out and about, you confirm will carry power bank. That can also charge your wireless gear, especially if you're using an Android phone with a USB-C cable. Fruit brand users will have to carry an extra cable because they extra. Also, did you know that you can connect multiple Corsair devices to a single USB dongle as long as they support slipstream multipoint? I'm talking about mouse, keyboard, and headset with one dongle to rule them all. Just use the IQ app to set it up and you're all good. Of course, even without that, you can still use Bluetooth to free up a USB port, but even with the technological advancements with Bluetooth, you're still going to be dealing with some latency, especially while gaming. My advice is to connect your mouse via the USB dongle and your keyboard via Bluetooth, and unless you're a star Starcraft Pro can do 300 actions per minute, you should probably be fine. Next, let's talk about battery life because everything that runs on battery eventually dies. But honestly, these modern wireless peripherals are actually already way better than they were just a few years back. The M75 Air, for example, on Bluetooth will last you about 100 hours, but only 34 hours when you use the dongle. The K65 Plus keyboard is gonna last you about 266 hours if you have the LEDs off. Unless you're an uncle who play rhythm games or if you play Valorant from morning to night, then these will last you quite a while before the next charge. Still, there are ways to improve battery life. Firstly, switch to Bluetooth because Bluetooth is less thirsty than 2.4 GHz wireless. Okay, so just stick to Bluetooth when you're not gaming. Number two, turn off your RGB because RGB will drain your batteries faster than a sugar baby. Number three, listen to your mother and switch your gear off when not in use. Number four, keep your gear closer to your devices because the further you are from them, the more power it will take to maintain a connection. Number five, don't be a dumb dumb and use your mouse on a glass, dark or shiny surface because it will take more power for the sensor to track your movements. On top of that, if you're using Corsair gear, you also have the IQ app which will give you notifications if your battery is dying. Also, it allows you to customize your settings to optimize battery life so you can have unlimited power. Not really unlimited but you know what I mean lah. Now that we've gotten all the boring stuff out of the way, let's talk about what you should look out for when actually buying the thing. It basically depends on who you are. For instance, if you're one of those new age digital nomads, then you probably don't want something heavy or clunky. Take the M75 Air that is only 60 grams and the K65 Plus keyboard that has a 75% format. I know it's confusing, but compact what? Now if you're a writer, then you know you need that serotonin boost from those satisfying clicks. So go for a tactile or clicky switches that will give you more of a uh, physical confirmation which allows you to type in the dark. 
I've been using this Corsair K65 Plus for a couple of weeks now and decided to test it out with a typing speed test and scored a decent 74 words per minute. Doing the same test on our writer's mushy laptop keyboard only got me 54 WPM. This might not seem like a big deal, but that's a 27% difference in productivity. Gamers on the other hand should probably go for linear switches like the Corsair Red ones on this K65 Plus keyboard. See how fast I can finger this keyboard? For your mouse, just go for the highest DPI sensor and polling rate that you can afford. And also, FPS gamers might want something light like this M75 Air. I'm gonna leave this keyboard sizing chart for you to look at, so just consider what keys you actually use every day. Most people won't need the numpad unless you're a responsible adult who do your own taxes, an accountant, or in very rare cases, an accountant gamer. So before we talk about price, here are some features you might want to have. A switchable layout between Mac and Windows for when you betray the PC master race. A designated place to store the dongles. Can just chucho and forget. Bluetooth with multiple device pairing so you can switch between your phone, your laptop, your tablet and all that good stuff. A keyboard that has a PCB with hot swappable key switches. It's future proof because if one or a couple of these switches break, you can just replace them. You can also further customize the keyboard to your needs by swapping out the key switches. Now let's talk about price point. These days there are a lot of cheap stuff out there because China number one. But do you really want to spend your hard-earned cash on trash? Okay, jokes aside, here are a few things that may affect the price of your wireless peripherals. Number one, brand, which might not indicate quality, but will give you better warranty and also come with more firmware updates. Number two, build quality because it needs to withstand your abuse when you nerd rage. See? So solid. Don't even flex. Number three, Bangsawan features. I'm talking about high polling rate, super fast DPI sensors, and also customizable RGB. It's just gonna cost you up. If you wanna play with the sharks, make sure you're swimming in cash. There's definitely a premium to pay when you go wireless because they have to sumbat more components to make these things work properly. But in my not so humble opinion as a Bangsawan, money is to buy convenience. Got so much money, but ma fun. For what? Okay, now some good advice for real, for real, okay? If you're a gamer, just get a proper mouse like this M75 Air and keep your crappy keyboard because a good mouse is gonna make more of a difference in your gaming experience. And if you're a writer, just get a proper keyboard like this K65 Plus, A Plus, because your hands huh, will be too busy typing to even care about that clicky clicky. A crappy mouse is not gonna make that much of a difference. Moral of the story, when budget is limited, just get one good stuff and one crappy stuff instead of spreading that budget across two mediocre stuff. That is everything I have to teach you about making the switch from wired to wireless. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like and share. Don't forget to also check out the K65 Plus keyboard and the M75 Air mouse if you want to improve your wireless experience. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions regarding these products or whatever and I'll try my best to reply to every single one of you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell harder than you hit the gym and follow us on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. Again, my name is Shane, the Bang Sawan, and I will see you in the next one. Nice day.